All right, sup, sup, sup. My name is Rui for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. Welcome to the combo guide for Infernities. If there's a combo guide you want to see in the future, uh, let me know. The reason it's Infernities is because it's long overdue. I said there'd be a combo guide. People ask for it. Sorry for the delay. You can blame Tor. So what's going to happen is every Friday, the combo guide will switch out with other videos, kind of like the Sunday video. So uh, basically, you guys got one month to let me know what combo guides you want to see so I can actually practice with the deck if I don't know and I can learn all the combos. So let's talk about Infernities in general. And let's talk about why we're running Beetle. So if our team was still at three, I could do a Cyber Dragon Infinity guide, but that can't be done right now because not 100% consistent. I probably could, but we'll, we'll save that for when we get to Cyber Dragon Infinity. So anyways, these Necromancers and this Archfiend are going to be like the primary things you're going to work with. So you want to get these all set up. You're going to use this. You're going to use whatever kind of case scenario you want to use to set up uh, Infernities. It's not hard. It just... We lose a lot of consistency, uh, a lot of power. More, more power than consistency with the limitation of this. So it's been limited forever, so you just deal with it. So basically, special him, you get Beetle, right? Uh, basically, you just need these two cards, and let's just say there's a Necromancer there for shits and giggles, right? So, you have no cards in hand, you're going to tribute off the Beetle, and I'm going to explain how to go Boxia, because it, Bixia, Boxia, Boxia, because it's hilarious. Um, so, you Synchro into level 6, and it's basically like Dragoides, except that you don't have the whole equipping, you just have the tuner there for you, for Axes. You can also go like 30 other things with this. So you go for Memphis Horus. Memphis Horus is generic and also uh, is a worm. I'm actually going to try to get that on the camera there for you to see. See, it's a worm. It's a wire. Um, so th when you synchro with him out, it gives you access to Boxia. If you ever play Yang Zings, you know how good this card is. This thing will send a monster to the graveyard and you bring one back. Um, that's level 4 lower, so you get an additional search. It's like playing multiple Archfiends just with this one card. So, the way this came about was a subscriber actually showed me this combo, so he gets credit, not me. But I have kind of furthered it a little bit better, uh, a little bit better, a little bit more with the deck. Not better, a little bit more with the deck. Um, and made my infirmities into it, just so I could fit my place out. So what you could also do, and I do run it, I just don't have it over here. You can run Goyo, and then another level 8, like Stardust, or Void, or BLs, or Doom. Whatever you want to run in that slot, you can run that slot. But there's also one other thing that this same play opens up when you tribute the two. You get the two beetles. You can sync out all these guys. And you can make Trish. Who doesn't like Trish? Trish is amazing. You should always run Trish. So you can actually do these combos really, really long if you've ever seen Infernities. They're like, um, what's, the, what's that thing? The damn thing's thing. Uh, spiritual Beast. I like that. So you have Arch, you have uh, Mirage, I'm calling him Archfiend. You have Mirage, you contribute him, go to 100 Eyes Loop, get additional searches, that's great. Uh, your main primary searches are always going to be this, or the Barrier, or the Launcher, depending on what you have. I think I have Barrier over here already, so I was like, wait, where the hell is it? I did have everything over here. So, Launcher, Break, Barrier, Inferno, another Inferno Monster. That's pretty much all your searches, just from Archfiend alone. And you can use it multiple times in a turn, depending on your setup. And your setup, you could pretty much always get two just from the Boxia combo alone. So getting two cards out of your deck, and one of those being Launcher, will grant you a third card. If you get a Mirage and you have the setup, that's going to be four cards. And you can see how that goes, so you can control your opponent and just outdo them. The deck doesn't do a great grind game, to be completely blunt. It doesn't really, but it has a great control game because of Void Ogre Dragon. Especially with Pendulums, you can stop a Pendulum, so that's something. If we make multiple Void Ogre Dragons, and there is plenty of ways of doing that, it's just not as consistent as it used to be, then you just basically play three Void Ogres, and you go Void Ogre Loop, and you stop them in their tracks. So it's something else you could do. Now, the one really kinky thing, if you want to go kinky about this, you can use Infernity Break, and you can banish out Mirage, and when you banish out Mirage, in that case, when you banish out Mirage, right, you can use two of these guys to go a Levier, detach the Levier, get the Mirage back, uh, tribute the Mirage, get the Necromancer back, and anything else you may have in your graveyard that has a pretty name. I don't know, maybe these two guys. That additional search and attrish play with the Levier on board. So, and you get you get Launcher, so you can go Void Ogre Dragon if you have that setup, which is easy enough. There's plenty of ways you can abuse the deck, but let me show you some testing.
So why I shuffle this, I've also left the deck profile down uh, below for you in the comment section. It should be there. If not, just let me know and I will do so. But this way you guys can actually see the consistency here. So I'm, this is the one problem you will always see. It's kind of like counter fairies. And that's pretty much when you have complete setup. So if you're going second, you're just in, you're in God, you're in God tier because you just play foolish. Send a Mirage to the graveyard. Uh, Mirage. I always confuse the two names. It's way too early. I haven't had coffee yet. So you send Archfiend to the graveyard, and then you set four. <laughs> set four. <laughs> and it's coming from a guy who hates set four. You get the you get the Archfiend, and then you get Barrier. So that way you can actually protect your giant ash back row from tw upcoming twin twisters and whatnot. So that's a giant thing. You could, that's a great thing you could do. Um, at this point. Pretty much stop your opponent's plays, mostly, I guess, you know, depending on what you run. I like the person, that's just me. I, I'm probably going to switch some of this around. Or so many Mirror Force, imagine so many Mirror Force and say regular Mirror Force, it's not even the shot. There you go. Um, so, go to your next draw, kind of poop. You go to your next draw, it's got. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things, you just got to work with what you're given, but you also have called the Haunted Face Down, so. But you're not going to, like, 90% of the time, you have to build into your loop. You can't just go straight for the loop. You have to build into it. Because this is a deck that has been hit by Konami multiple fucking times. And I'm not even joking when I say that. Multiple times this deck has been butchered by Konami. And yet, it's still playable. Which is funny. Um, because they did not do their job correctly, needless to say. So this is an interesting hand, to say the least. And this is stacked beyond stacked. But Armageddon Knight... And then this is what I was saying about uh, going in Cyber Dragon Infinity turn one with this deck. All you need is Instant Fusion and Armageddon Knight. That's all you really need. Um, or if you have another monster in hand, you go Dark Refer. So I'm actually going to talk about this real quick. I don't have a Cyber Dragon Infinity in front of me, so I'll probably just snap one in when we go to it. Uh, same for Plotamius. So pretty much, you just want to send one to the grave. You go for the Norden. I don't have Norden. He's in my Light Sworn right now. So you go for the Norden. You get out the Archfiend, right? That's when you overlay all three to Plotamius. Please cue it and picture Plotamius. Ha! Huh. That's when you detach the three for Plotamius, and you put the Cyber Dragon Nova on top. Cue and Cyber Dragon Nova. Ha! Huh. And then from there, you just go Infinity and you poop on their face. And when you poop on their face with Infinity, it's hilarious because you got three materials, uh, two materials with it. So that's something you could do alone just in turn one Infinities. Now, again, not the most consistent thing. Maybe if you play more Armageddon Knights and more Insufusions, it's going to be hella fun. But the only thing is, a lot more decks can do it more consistently than you uh, can ever do it. Let's just put it that way. Let's be honest with it. Let's not sugarcoat it. Let's cut the deck 20 which ways. So no one can say I'm stacking if I get God Hand again. So this is an interesting hand, to say the least. Now, if Lava Lol Chain was still around... I could do so many things with this. Since it's not around, I kind of wish this was a dark ref for the Armageddon Knight. So, you basically play the Armageddon Knight, and say you go in turn two, so we actually get the next card in the deck, but that's fine. Um, so, basically, you go for Dire Wolf. And the way you go for Dire Wolf, and it may seem like overplaying, I have to. There's Street Patrol. So, you send the one Street Patrol to the grave, and you have the one Street Patrol in hand. You overlay for a dire wolf, you pop, you banish out the second street patrol, so both of these are banished. You go for Archfiend with no cards in hand, you go for search, your search should contain the barrier, because you want that set up immediately, and there's actual reason. If you play barrier first, or you play Inferno, you can actually banish it out for break, so it's set up in their face. Um, let me quickly shuffle and cut this, this way, again, no cheating, get the one off the upstart, which is a solemn. So I pretty much now have control to beat down my opponent for a little bit. And then Insufusion comes on in, and we can do things with it. Insufusion comes on in because it likes to stack. And then Torrental, then Monk, then MST, then Avenger. So you kind of see the point. It's it's one of those decks that you really got to be skillful with, and you got to get a little bit of, uh, if you're on dev, RNG luck. If you're not on dev, you got to have the heart of the cards. If you don't have the heart of the cards, then it doesn't always pan out really well. Um, for the future, if I don't own the deck like this, like if you want me to do a Cosmo combo guide, then pretty much what will happen, I'll do it on Dead Pro. Now I'll do it live like I'm doing now, so that way you guys can actually see hands.
it, you know, it would be close. It won't be the exact same thing. But just to show you what's in my hand here, it's actually a pretty good hand. So you play upstart, go for the one, and you get exactly what you needed. So pretty much in this setup, I just set all four, say go. Hope I don't get OTK. Play Inferno, ditch one, ditch two, which is probably going to be this guy here. And then shuffle cut, because you have to. You have to shuffle cut. After you shuffle cut, now you can freely play break without any worries. So draw next card, mirror force, no worries. Play the launcher, go into these two, off the launcher. Go into the box seal loop from there. But see, it took a few hands to actually get there. And there's no cutaways. There's no uh, me, me personally editing anything outside of fucking just imagery of cards that are not in front of me or I own right now. So there's that too. Why is this like not focusing? There we go. <laughs> That's the first time this camera has done that. The very first time the camera has done that. So it's kind of one of those things when you think about it and you break it down. It's kind of like, oh, that's not what tried. There we go. It's not one of those things when you th when you think about it. Um, you just have to go in with the mindset that you're not always going to get that god hand, but you have plenty of options to work with. You just need to know what you're doing. So let's do this. Give us a good hand. We beg of you. We beg of you to cool. It's a joke. It's an inside joke. Um, set three. That's in hand, obviously. Is there a break on the board? No, there's not a break on the board. So you want to send... God damn, that's a pain in the ass. Alright, we actually want to send Tree Patrol. There's actually a legitimate reason. So obviously this is going to die 90% of the time. Yeah, that's going to die. That's what we want. So you draw your card. And you banish out Street Patrol for Street Patrol, you summon the Beetle, you tribute for two Beetle. These are all face down, mind you. So I'm actually going to do it like that uh, real quick. No one gets the wrong idea. Go for Call of the Haunted, Armageddon Knight, Armageddon Knight, Mill 1, which is going to be the Arch Fiend. So these two are still face down. And you can play the break if you feel like, you know, back row is going to hurt you. I know it may hurt you. Alright, so you go for these two. And we banish out the one tree patrol. So Memphis. Go into these two. Boxia. Boxia. Send. You also get the other effect to send one back um, to the deck. So there's Archfiend. We have these two set. This is used already. It, obviously it's still on the board, but you know, it's used up. It's used up. It's, it's past its prime. Now there's a few options you can actually go for here. And pretty much the one I like to go for is Necromancer. Because Necromancer is going to open the doorway for even dumber things at this point. So Necromancer, banish out. Go for this guy here. Now there's actually a few things you can do here. You can actually go for a Leo. You can go for a Goyo. You can go for Armades. Or you can go for a complete Trish, depending on the situation, depending on how you build the deck. So there's plenty of ways to actually approach the deck. You just need to... Practice and master the combos and become one with the force. I know you can do this. <laughs> In all seriousness, I do hope you enjoyed this Infernity combo guide. If there's anything else I can help you guys with when it comes to the combos of Infernities, you let me know. If there's any deck you want a combo guide for, you let me know and we'll do it like this. Uh, if it's any of the IRL decks that I already featured on the channel, that you hear me behind the camera filming, like Lightsworn and Black Wings and all that, I could do that in my sleep. But if it's anything else that I do not have like access to, I do not own, like Pendulum Magician at the moment, then I have to do it off so like I have to do it on Dev uh, Dev Pro off the main camera. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe for more and I will see you later. Peace.